It's a fundamental assumption that all mammalian species are the same, but it's really difficult to actually show that that's true. So this was sort of one of my holy grail experiments, was to look at the biophysics of neurons, how different inputs are processed as they arrive into neurons and integrated together, and see if that's different in rodents uh, and in humans. The challenge is getting the tissue from neurosurgeons, and those neurosurgeons have to be research-oriented. They have to want to collaborate. And uh, we did that with Sid Cash uh, over at MGH. We obtained brain tissue from patients with intractable epilepsy who are undergoing neurosurgery to remove abnormal regions deep within the brain. Uh, to do that, we had to remove overlying cortex, that area of the brain that's thought to be responsible for higher order cognitive processing. We then took that piece of tissue, placed it into specialized artificial cerebrospinal fluid, and handed it off to Mark's group. Uh, it's usually Lou and Derek. Basically, they're running down the halls of MGH Hospital and out the door and into a waiting car. And then they jump out of the door and then run it up to the lab where we're waiting. We take it out, put it into a new uh, solution that's oxygenated and cold, and then uh, we have to take this out and orient it and figure out how are we going to set it up on the slicer physically so that we can get these thin sheets of the circuit to then go on the microscope that we can then use to do experiments. Any misstep at this stage basically ends the entire case. So I just put one of the brain slices on our microscope over here. And under the microscope, there's this sort of moment in which we bring the brain slice into focus, and sometimes there's just nothing there. It's just, it's just dead. But other times... There's a neuron there, there's another one here. It's just filled with live, fat, happy, juicy-looking neurons. So I'm going to be here for 20 hours or something. Everyone's very excited because it means, you know, two days of data. So the technique that we use to record the electrical activity from these neurons uh, is called patch clamping. The key principle is you take uh, a piece of glass tubing and you pull it into a little tiny hollow needle and then you fill it with an electrolyte solution. So this glass needle becomes an electrode. And now I'm going to fill the pipette with some dye. And the glass has a really fascinating property in that it adheres very, very tightly to the cell membrane. This is one of the challenges to doing these experiments is you gotta make one of these pipettes, you gotta fill it with the electrolyte solution, you gotta put it on the rig, you gotta find a neuron that you're interested in that looks good, that's healthy, then you gotta get your electrode down in there, you know, into the solution next to the neuron. It's kind of like playing a neuroscience video game. So now I'm gonna put some positive pressure because this is connected to the pipette. You then push the pipette into the neuron and then you release the pressure. And this little piece of membrane now gets sucked up into the pipette and then you can gain intracellular access to the inside of that cell. You can also use it to fill the neuron with dye so you can reveal the architecture of those neurons and then you can correlate the architecture, the structure, with the function. And so what Lou is trying to do is have a recording electrode near the soma, but then another electrode far away out in the antenna structure, the dendrites, to see uh, what kinds of local processing operations are taking place out there, and then how that dendrite communicates with the soma. And so we started to do experiments um, by just looking at the dendrites that are the closest to the soma. In that space, things look very, very similar. So on one hand, that was a little bit disappointing. We were expecting you know, specializations that made us human. Um, but on the other hand, it's reassuring because, okay, rodents are a really good model. You know, the past you know, 50 years uh, of doing experiments in rodents makes sense. They're an excellent model system. Where we started to see differences was when we looked into the very far away dendrites, the ones that are much, much longer than what you see in the rodents. And there, we see that their behavior is very different. Those very distal dendrites are integrating a bunch of inputs, right, independently of what's happening at the soma. So the human neurons sort of form their own individual kinds of neural networks. It's sort of a network inside a neuron. So that sort of conditional kinds of interaction supports a very particular mode of computation in the human neuron. So that's what we're starting to see evidence for. Uh, Red Bull and coffee? <laughs>
Uh, no, 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 no. Passion, passion yeah. for science, of course. 